aired on RCTV. Um, and to uh, the recording, you can go to Verizon 33 and Comcast 22 and www.rctv.org. The first item on the agenda at 7 o'clock is an order of conditions 270-0686, um, plan change, 88 Glenmere Circle, Jew. And, uh, Thank you. So I have a little background okay. to do first. So, um, so it's 88 Glenmere Circle, and we gave um, them a order of conditions 270-686. Um, so, a request for a minor plan change for 88 Glenmore Circle uh, to replace the approved Caltech Recharge Infiltrator with a dry well or a corrugated perforated pipe replacement. The Caltech Recharge Infiltrator uh, was designed to handle roof runoff for an addition that was 432 square feet. The approved Caltech recharge ran through HydroCAD, um, would infiltrate the 100-year storm, 8.57, I guess it's rainfall, in the 24-hour time frame. The applicant did not, did not show a replacement system, but we talked about a dry well or a corrugated perforated pipe. Both of these replacement infiltrators do not show volume uh, so it's impossible to determine the capacity. Uh, with these proposed changes, there would be minor grading around the area to um, the installation. Um, the lot is established with grass within the buffer zone, and these changes will meet the setbacks which are required under the bylaw. The closest point of the installation of the Cultec was 35 feet from the resource area. The dry well can be installed uh, 50 feet away from the resource area, and the corrugated pipe would, the distance would be unknown because I don't know how that's laid out. Um, this lot is part of the Glenmore Circle neighborhood. The homes uh, on the even sides of the street abut an intermittent stream and a forested wetland complex known to the Conservation Commission as the Randall Road, uh, it's the other side of the Randall Road subdivision. Um, I, watched this uh, I watched this project closely, but was unaware the infiltrator was not installed until uh, contacted by the homeowner last week. A site visit was conducted on Tuesday, October 8th, 2019 to verify conditions in addition to the infiltrator issue, the edge of the lawn was covered with yard waste and branches. As part of the July 13, 2017 approval, yard waste is to be removed prior to the issuance of the Certificate of Compliance. Additionally, a 40-inch white pine tree was removed by a crew that was hired by the town to remove town trees in the area, but approached the homeowners uh, about removing this tree while they were there. Um, with those things, I turn this over to the chair and any discussion by the commission. Can you repeat that last part? About the tree? Yeah. So there was a tree, it was like a 40 inch white pine tree, and this town had hired uh, a company, I forgot the name of the company, to oh, Wakefield. Wakefield. It was a Wakefield tree company. And they were hired to remove some trees. But while they were there, they noticed this tree that looked God. that looked uh, in jeopardy. And I think Mike Hannaford checked it out. Did he? Did he say that, or did uh, mm. Mrs. 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 Shanghai, Mrs. Hai, say that? How do you pronounce that? X U. Uh, my name is Chang Ai. Hi. Maybe for you is hard. And last name is Shu. It's, uh, my neighborhood called Shoes, which means shoes we wear. Shoes, you can call them a shoe, uh, which is easy maybe. I, I want to uh, speak a little bit with a tree. Yep. My house was damaged last, uh, uh, last winter. Uh, when the storm coming, the tree from the side, the pine tree, hit my house, damaged. So I, I spent $50,000 to fix it. Of course, it's uh, by the insurance. 
So I, I talked to the town of like Michael, and mm -hmm. they decided to cut all of the trees around the house, the pipe, include the one uh, Mr. Torrance uh, talked about that tree belong to my property. The rest of the pine trees belong to the town's property. So, but the, as one batch, the, the, the tree service from Wickfield, they cut all of them. I pay my parts and the town pay the town's parts. Mm -hmm. Also, my neighbor cut the one tree too. Uh, my neighbor pay her parts. Mm -hmm. That's the tree story. So the town trees, the reason the town took responsibility for those is, I'm sorry, is, it, is there an easement or is it a tree lawn? We'll check. Yeah, I should have checked beforehand. Let's find out right now. Was this originally supposed to be installed? Uh, the, the original price for the work that was done, did it include having this work done as well? The infiltrator did not. The infiltrator did not. That was never part of the original proposal? It was the original proposal. Uh, because the last step is for inspection is the conservation. So my contractor told me that for I need uh, Called what? Appliance offer? No, I realize I'm seeing the It's these, this row of trees. Appliance, what that called? Uh, you need a, and it's in a document to show the conservation before yeah, and that. after. A permit? Yeah, a permit. Yeah, he said, uh, I need to contact my engineer. He's a risk. He take up my conservation project. Uh, he noted that it's the uh, future is not in store. I, I didn't notice that. So I talk with him, and then I have to start over because I already put the grass on it on all the backyard. So I back and forth a few times, uh, ask how to do that, and then he came up with numbers like five thousand, six thousand dollars. I guess my, the reason I asked the question is because if this was part of the original construction project, then you I, shouldn't I would be spending, say yes. You shouldn't be spending any money to have the contractor to come back and do what you already paid him to do. You be doing this as a matter of completing a job he hasn't finished yet. Either that or he owes you a $6,000 rebate. So then you can hire somebody else to put it in. I'm, I'm, that's about what I'm thinking. Am I off here? Uh, I don't think that's the case. I, I also contacted my contractor. I said uh, I have to pay extra. It's not included in that. Do you have an itemized proposal or quote for the work done by your contractor? Yes, I do have that. Is quote. this part of the project included in there? Uh, I don't I, I don't think so. Okay, well if it's not that's then that's moot. The, the price is the price, but if it's something he already said he'd do for you then I just told him to come back and put it in. But it wasn't part of the original proposal then anyway. Yeah it is our original proposal basically that I just want to uh, ask if because they, I have uh, like 400 new addition. A four, sorry, what? 400 square foot. 400 uh, square, square foot. Backyard, close to the conservation. And uh, I create one gutter, new gutter. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are three now, but the other two are already existed. It's belong to the old uh, park. So I, I don't think it cost like, like $6,000. I don't know if we can, uh, can I do a different way or that's my uh, question because it's if I plus all together related to conservation permit plus now I have to deal with my engineer it's like more than ten thousand for the conservation parts in related work. Chuck, were there any other? Um Alternatives to deal with the stormwater runoff. So the main the main question is, what's the volume? What size storm are we capturing? It is about a twenty foot gutter with a downspout. It would be nice and design as it's designed here. There are two 
um, leaders running to the Caltech, but um, you know, out there on site, there's only one, and it's uh, it's on the if you're facing the addition, it's going to be on the left hand side. So we could pick up the one at the back of the garage too, but it's it's all about you know what's the what's the volume and what's the design storm and and that's hard to know. And it's 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 kind of a you know a story where the contractor just concentrated on the house. There was a full foundation built or put in there, and the excavator was back there. And they never looked into this other part. So, it's, you know, here we are at the end of the day. They're looking for their occupancy permit, but we have something. And I checked the order of conditions. I wrote it up that we asked for those branches in the yard waste to be removed. We asked for this to be part of it. And uh, both those things haven't happened yet. But if there, if it's possible to accept something different, it, I don't. I think that maybe you might want to look at. Uh, some sort of design to so, to understand what's going on. Nice. Now, I, I did take the time to look at some some pictures. I don't know if these will come up. I don't have good luck on pictures. Yeah. You know, just something. I don't know if they'll all come up. Yeah, here's more traditional. Uh, this is something. You know, you can. I guess that looks like a barrel, and you could put that in yourself, and then the pipe, and you know, I guess the downspout would. Discharge into that area. You can I ask you could just make a leaching field if you want to do yeah. that. Where is the, the water limit? Here's here? something, you know, here's something else. Put your some water table here where this would go. I don't know what the water table is here. I mean, you know, simply, I, I've built. Chuck, is this just for one? Probably 30 of these downstairs? in the past, and none of them have failed. And, and, the, and the smallest of the ones that I've built were a hole that was four feet in round, six feet deep, that was filled with three-quarter inch stone that took the leaders from a 28-foot house and has never overflowed. So what, what does but that mean? It yeah. depends on where the water table is. No, but what's... And what the, what the, the soils are around it. But they were there, right? I mean, but they were there. You no. ultimately put something in. No, it was there because... <clears throat> I put it in because there was um, a problem with the, the leaders that come off the house that went onto a lawn area, and every time they had heavy rains, the kids would come in with mud all over their shoes. So, and, and, and it, and it um, you know, the worst one that I had had uh, stony clay. Um, it was a number two clay loom mix, um, and... But, you know, basically it's this <clears throat> landscape fabric that's there. You can basically line the hole with landscape fabric and then fill it with stone. You don't need a concrete vessel to fill with crushed stone to make one of these systems. I agree. So. Uh, I, I think there are options. I think we need yeah. something. But I think we need a plan as to what is going to happen. Can I understand? Can you go back to... Are there two gutters that go into the Caltech, a Caltech system? Oh, sorry. Looks like it. Okay. And then so there's one over to the right that doesn't. This one here is the one that's how it's been built. There's nothing here. Oh. Well, I thought you said okay. So is it just one conductor that's coming down from the corner of the addition? Mm-hmm. I mean, it makes sense. When you see it, it's pretty small. Yeah. You would—that's how most people would have done it. I'm okay with an alternate infiltration system, as long as it's going to work. It's not going to be worth the effort. So, what are you, you asking? Well, it's going to work as well as what we've got there, because it just won't be made out of concrete. Okay. I mean, I guess the point is that you. This is a. The, these Coltec systems are, are built for large capacities, for larger capacities than what was going there. I, I think there's an option that's probably more affordable that can still take the capacity that's that's needed. At. And I'm fine with that, you know, if that's that's how this gets amended. 
Well, they cement vaults are a couple of things, I believe. Ones they won't, they're not going to cave in and follow. They're mm. pretty structurally strong and they're safe. But you just have to fill the ground up with some pea stone and cover it with some landscape carpet or rug or whatever they call that mm. environmental filter. It's a geotech fabric. Geotech fabric or whatever. It's, it's, it's yeah. not going to collapse because it's full of stone. So right. it will still work. There's a little less volume in there because it's full of stone instead of air. But All the ones around my house were. Yeah, so, so, yeah. I know. Actually, I would ask the, the applicant, when they dug the foundation, was there water in the hole? No, no. no. Uh, Fred Geisel. So he's an engineer. He, he did a. Uh, yeah, he did. He did the whole plan and stamped the plan. So we know that it it's gonna infiltrate up to the hundred year storm, and they use the Cornell method. Yeah. So it's all that, and I don't mind. I think it's it's fine that it's, it gets dug, but I'm just wondering how do you figure out how big this is supposed to be and. You know, how do you how do you make sure? How do you we know what we're getting? Well, I think the other thing is is that if it's going to be something that's other than the Caltech system, then it would have to have a plan for it. And then, when this was being installed, that it'd be inspected by you as the conservation commissioner to prove that it's a size that was given on the plan. All right. So is this, would this um, engineer propose a different alternative? Are we looking for a plan? Mr. Shiva. Yeah, this is uh, it's my purpose actually. I talked with him, he said, uh, he, because he proposed this. No, mm -hmm. I understand that. He want to follow this, let me want to follow this. I, I came up, like, just give me a number, like $6,000, I'm scared, this is, uh, I, I only one down spot, I s spend like $6,000 for, for. Well, a lot of the reason I spend $6,000 is it's finished landscape. Yeah, yeah. so, it's, it's, it's at that point. Essentially redoing all that. Yeah. So there's, there's a timing aspect, and there's a punishment factor in that $6,000 number for not doing it when the ground was open. Right. So um, that's part of the part of the six thousand. No, I, I think that's fine. I mean, should we ask for something, some sort of plan? Maybe he can work with Fred Geisel and come up with a plan that shows something. We need some sort of design schematic mm -hmm. as to what this is, what's actually going in the ground there. And just the, just for verification of that, it's gonna it, at a minimum meet capacity. And be constructed appropriately. And, and also, actually, I check my few neighbors around me. I, I didn't see much like this kind of facility is installed. I, I just don't know. It's uh, for my case, just one thousand need that. I, I just. I, so we went over this in the office. The your neighbors around you haven't done an addition. Um, so when they do, you know, and then some of them were closer than others, so not every single one of them is going to end up having to do something like this, but they're, but if, if that person to your, I think it was your left, did any kind of addition, they would end up infiltrating their roof runoff, and they're going to say to us, hey, my neighbor dug it himself and threw some pea stone in it, you know, why can't I do that? I think ultimately we're looking for an engineered solution, and, and it doesn't need to be this, a, a really expensive option. It, it needs to be something, and it doesn't need to be with the same engineer. There, there may be some, if, if you're getting pushback to that, that, that you've only got one solution, I mean, there's, there's, there's people that will think more creatively for you, too. But ultimately, I think we want to see that this extra runoff, uh, there, there's somewhere for storage for that, that extra runoff, that, that addition. Um, because that's, to me, that's the big part of this project. Whenever we're approving these, this is the piece that we 
most care about, or, or you know, from an addition standpoint, that we're getting, you know, we're not adding. Um. So maybe you could go back to Fred and with, uh, you know, discussion of this type of installation have him work with you he seemed like a reasonable guy and maybe he's not into designing his own or you could call one of these companies up and find out if there's some numbers you can get us on storm size and volume and capacity would our engineering department have any uh, suggestions on on alternative designs no, no. they don't design but they would Verify that the numbers work. Yeah. Them too. Okay. I think I don't think we're looking for what that first system could do. We're just looking for something, but but something on a uh, plan that I guess could be a sketch. Could be a sketch as long as there's numbers saying that you put it together and it's something that we can verify after it's built, and it, and then we'll have to discuss it at a meeting. Before we move on to it, so it sounds like you also have some uh, yard waste or tree limbs or something that's that part of the order of conditions yeah, so to remove that material. Yeah. So we should make sure that that gets removed um, as well because that was part of the order. So you're looking for, uh, you know, I, I think if you're going to get out there doing work on this part, you might as well plan on removing all that yard waste at the same time. And, and the issue on the pine tree that was removed. Um, I, I, I think know. what we heard, though, that it was damaged. I think, I think that if, if Mike, Mike Hannaford's the town tree warden, and if he's saying, I mean, kind of our policy is if Mike Hannaford's saying that a tree is in danger of falling or should come down, mm -hmm. it's his call. Okay. No, I just wanted to put that out on the table so un everybody on the commission understood that. Yeah, I mean, we were the, the town was taking down trees right there too. So I mean, yeah, yeah I think all of that. That tree actually is one tree split on the top, in the middle, not top. When wind comes, then you can clearly hear the sound squeaking, and if the storm very big, easily broke fall. That's why he recommends to remove mm -hmm. it. Thank you. I don't have an issue with that. Yep. So, we're, we're, uh, so you're going to continue until when do you think? When do you think you might be able to? We, we have another meeting in a, two weeks. Is that too soon for you to contact your engineer and come up with an engineering, or would you prefer to go two, two more weeks into November? Uh, I, I can't guarantee in two weeks, but if he work efficiently, maybe okay. If not, uh, I can't guarantee for two weeks. We need to continue again. We can always yeah. continue. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Always continue. Yeah. I mean, I can contact with him. He try different way. Right now, exactly the same he proposed before, uh, which is probably simply way. Right, like uh, Mr. Tom used the bucket, mm. and the end and pipe put through. Yeah, and can probably reduce cost and not six thousand dollars. Absolutely. Should be. Yeah, that probably a few if hundred you, or even thousand dollars. Can. If you can make it in two weeks, we can hear you in two weeks. And if you can't make it in two weeks, you can always request that another continuance, and then we'd hear it two weeks afterwards. So uh, if, we if can always put you on the agenda, and then and then you can just call and ask Chuck to continue, and then <coughs> we we'll put it off for two more weeks. But it's up to you. You mean if. If he agree the plan you propose with one bucket and another with the pipe. So I want Fred to uh, give me a call so I make sure he understands what we're asking for. And essentially, you got the components right, but we're not expecting a bucket. You know, there's a pipe involved. There's a, there is something that looks like a bucket, but it, it but it's it's an actual infiltrator that you're what we're trying to get, and it needs to be correct. So working with your engineer would be a, you know, a good move. And then ask him that he could source local 
you know, local supplies. Maybe he knows. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he's had to do something, uh, you know, for ten year storm or something like that, or something two year storm. So, or catch the first flush. If he wants to call me, that's fine. I talk to him a lot during your project, so that would be fine, and I could make sure he understands what we're asking for. Okay. And also not to wreck the budget. We don't want it to go to six grand again. I'll try to try to um, understand that too. All right. Do we hear a motion to I'll make a motion to continue? Second. All those in favor? Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Can I go? Yes, you can. Thank you. Oh, no, you have to stay. <laughs> no. <laughs> we got to stay. You're good. Have a good night. Night. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the next item. Yeah, the next item, we actually have someone here from Howard Street. You know, they're always like, you guys are just... just Anyways, um, whatever you're gonna say about Howard Street, I hope I don't get in trouble for putting this picture up. But we have a picture of just this, and just to say there was a site visit, and we're waiting for uh, a write-up from Horsley and Witten, and then a follow-up to that write-up uh, from from the team at Infrastructure, who will uh, who will, and then hopefully we'll all get back here. And discuss this at a public meeting. I think when we went to the site visit, there were a lot of things that couldn't be discussed. It was a little, you know, uh, it was a little trying because your instinct is to ask questions, but you can't. So, anyways, that's that's all we have. And this right now is continued until the 23rd of October, and it will be the first item on the agenda. Assuming they don't have anything, right? I mean. Oh well, yeah. Well, then they'll continue it again if that's not that. Since you want to add anything yeah, to that. Yeah. So Andy Street Civil Design Consultants. Um, I guess the only thing I add. Um, yeah, we'll respond short order after we see something from Rosie Witten. Um, and the only other thing we're working on is locating the um, isolated pocket. There's a, a area that was flagged for those of the board who don't know that was flagged in the back corner that is detached from the main. BVW back there that was agreed upon by Norse and Horsey Witten. Um, we're going to locate those, and we talked about getting those in a plan for. That's right. For I remember us well. talking about that. Yeah. So we're working on that, and that should be something ready for the 23rd as well. Right. So right. that's the only thing I'll add to it. Other than that, we definitely want to reserve kind of broader discussion until we have some more information from all parties. So. Right. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks, right. Andy. Okay. Get a motion to continue. Make a motion to continue. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, when, I, when I was just before I was leaving on that Howard Street thing, it seemed like they were they were just on the verge of declaring that little area not not a wetland. Is that still undefined? They didn't make any decisions while we were out there. So that's why they wanted it. Awfully hard. It really was. It seemed confusing. If it was. If it, you've got to look that hard to see if it's wet. It just seemed like they were. If it's declared it not wet, it won't be for a lack of effort. I guess I could put it that way. No, they're extremely thorough. Well, and that's I don't what know we wanted. Want to call it thorough, but it just seemed like you, you know you get a big enough microscope, even a flawless diamond looks like it's got. Bob, um, we continued. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fine. Can That's we go fine. to um, next? Uh, yeah, why are we doing policy discussion? And I don't know what you had in mind about that, but we can go to go to Mallet Trail Work. Mallet Trail Work. All right. <laughs> Which one was that? That was under old new business administration. No, no. I'm, yeah, sorry. Um, Administrator's report. So so actually, Will's here. What's Oops. new at Mallet? I had the wrong end. Sorry, Will. Um, Mallet? 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 So you might recognize that guy. This is the wrong end. i got to get to the other side of these. But, um, that, looks, that looks really professional. All right, so here we go. This is So the Trails Committee received a grant for uh, connecting Willow Street to... 
Hunt Street. And they had gone through the process. It's not unknown to many who watch our channel that this has been going on since, I don't know, last December or something like that. And so we've had a lot of input, a lot of input from uh, the Trails Committee and from the Engineering Department. So uh, at the end of the day, these are the, these are the structures that are holding up the bridge. And this is the group carrying them in. And there they are pulling it across the Abijona. It's actually not the river at that point. And that staging area is built on corrugated pipe. So it's as little disturbance as possible. And you know what's great about those is someone took the time to bolt them together so it's not gonna fall apart after a day's use. So it's really sturdy. Um, this is it, it's in place. They are quite heavy, but we pretty much only had to move it around for about five minutes and it was uh, exactly where it needed to be. A lot of prep work was done by Will Finch prior to getting out there, setting those uh, eight by eight posts at each end. Uh, this is still one day's worth of work. We had a lot of volunteers. I'm taking it like it's not mine, but it's, it was the Trails Committee. I, I might say we, but it was, it was the Trails Committee. Um, and this is one day's work, which, which I was pretty impressed with. We got a lot of stuff done, mostly uh, Andy Friedman right there. Um, stayed all day. Selectman shows up in the morning, stays until 3.30 working on this. It was great. Had, you know been on a lot of projects. I'd never seen that kind of commitment before. So that was great. We had a lot of volunteers come in, spend three or four hours, but Andy stayed there all day. And, um, this is more of the stuff being done. This is the ramp. So this, this uh, the grant that we got, we said that although the trails are not going to be ADA, but we'll make the ramps ADA compliable. So they're more than 30 six inches wide and we have a one to a one to twelve or a twelve to one pitch on on the entrances. Moving forward you can see the screening that they put up there that's uh, galvanized screening uh, all this is off the forest is it the forestry standards? Um, yeah US Forest Service. US Forest Standards is where they got this plan from and they're just repeating it here in Reading and uh, there's, there's Will. This is screwed together and bolted together. It's got galvanized, galvanized grid. No one's fallen through. Um, six by six, two by four, four by four is all bolted on, uh, are they two by fours laminated together? Uh, 22 feet long, raised almost two feet in its current condition over the Abajona River and in full bank condition you might be 12 to 8 inches above that. The gaps are between um, between the decking so light gets through so we don't have any uh, someone said they never saw a fish up there but it's like a stop sign. Oh, one fish. Do you know what kind it was? No, I don't. So that's that's it. That's uh, That's the update. We're having Again, I said we, but it's the Trails Committee, Trails Committee's project. They were the ones that applied for the grant, all the legwork. Um, there's, a, uh, there's another trail day, trail building day uh, in two weeks, which, and the date is, do you know the date? Actually, it's, well, it's um, a week and a half, yeah, from now. Um. 26th. I think it's the 26th, because this, this Saturday would be the 12th, and then the 19th or the 26th? I think it's the 19th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Maybe we'll get a, get a... So on the 19th is another trail day. We roughed out the trail between the Abajona. So, so if you walk in there and you come in from Willow Street, there's a parking area. It's a little treacherous, so go slow. But you can get to this parking area. Many cars can fit there. And then we have wood chips path between that parking area and Lowell Street. Um, and so that's the PS convenience store. So you could walk straight through. And then we started working on that trail between that 
trail that goes from Willow to PNS up to um, Hunt Street, and we roughed out that trail last weekend, and um, now it just needs to be refined, needs to be worked on, some things need to be cut down, uh, and you know, it's just and just another trail day that's going to happen on the 19th, and it starts at 10 o'clock at the site. And we usually cut out at 3.30, and if anyone has any time, and not just you, but anyone listening, if anyone has any time or some skills, skilled people are needed. Or if you don't have any skills. <laughs> then bring drinks and snacks. <laughs> there, oh, coffee's always needed. Yeah, okay. so true. No, no, so anyone can help, because we have wood chips that can be spread out, and we have Frag Mighty that needs to be stomped down, and there's other things that go on, and the Trails Committee have done this for many years, and they've worked with the skilled and the unskilled, and everyone has a job, and it's a great way to become motivated with the process. So that's all I have to say. Will, you don't have anything to say about that? Um, I was just down there today just doing a little planning for part of the um, ramp transition um, and there were there were three women or girls from the track team that were running through there. Oh, so nice. they're, it's, it's getting a lot of use. Every time I'm down there, I see two or three people. Yeah, it's good. Families with strollers. I found I ran into a gentleman with his baby in a stroller. Actually, I'm glad to see the kids uh, from uh, Austin Prep because I did see them running uh, in a, a pack on Summer Ave one day and I thought I was like mm, yeah. you know I didn't think that was a great place to, to run right. yeah. they run up Main Street which amazes me yeah. <sighs> half on the sidewalk half on the half on yeah the I think it's a little dangerous that's my favorite picture right there <clears throat> yeah, I, had to, I had to take the shot so I couldn't help <laughs> but uh, you know someone has let me, to let me take the someone, picture <laughs> <laughs> someone has to you notice all the shots are all the heavy stuff but, um, you know, I was doing, doing some copy. No, I'm not. They have, there's, um, so the Trail Committee has a Facebook page. If you want to check out their work and check out upcoming trail days and when they have their meetings and things like that, just keep in touch with that group. They have a Facebook page, and it's pretty easy to find. So check that out, and you'll see some pictures of me. But uh, this, is, this is me taking the shots. So oh, it's good, Will. Good job. You can see that Will is... And all these people, pictures, you know, getting the work done. And, and I, I have to say, with all this involvement here, I, I, I couldn't help but notice today that Will looked like he was looking for work to do for the fall. He was actually up on top of a 24-foot ladder, <laughs> raking his roof. So maybe people that have leaves or whatever, maybe Will's looking for yeah. something to do. <laughs> Is that true, Will? You have nothing better to do than rake your roof? Uh, well, I, I got getting, plenty of leaves at my house if you're looking for something to rake. For the deluge, I had to clean out the gutters and stuff. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, I thought of it because I'm, I'm painting the back of the house too. So. <laughs> no, I just saw you raking the pine needs. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just being facetious. Yeah, it's, it is a problem. No, I yeah. understand. Once they get in the gutter, they don't come out. Right. Yeah. So the next thing, uh, transitioning yeah. to. Uh, That's right. Transitioning, Probably, but not very far away. Yeah, so transitioning to the stream itself, we have, uh, and again, I don't know if it matters which side we start from. Uh, this is probably pretty good. So this picture's up because I want everyone to notice the vegetation on the bank and the shading that's, that's happening on the bank. So I was called by Kimberly Roth, um, a DEP uh, wetlands analyst, and she said uh, she had she told me that there's some activity in this area, and she wanted me to check it out. So, so I went down there, and uh, you know she had told me that there was some some unauthorized work that that should have got her permit and whatnot. So this is what I was confronted with when I, when I got there. So again, you know, here's the bank. You know, there is some dirt just at the edge, low bank. This is low <coughs> conditions. 
not top of bank would be above the dirt there on the corner. So this is how you would know where the top of bank is. But but this is this is um, engineered and it has a trench in the center of it. So this is a picture of the day that we did the work. It had rained and I'm not calling out anything, but you can see that the water's mostly in the trench. Here's another picture of some, some additional work and some side casting and that's all I have. So so, so it looks like there's some cutting of bank vegetation. Yeah, so there was... Um, Drenching of, of the channel. Oh, the channel, which is yeah. absolutely that's a lot not allowed. Work, it looks like, isn't it? So, uh, you know, we don't have a picture of who's doing this work, but I did talk to the DPW department and asked them what they know about it, and one name came up, and um, they tell me that they have nothing to do with putting this person at a job site or arranging the work that he does, or supervising anything that he's going to do. Their, their only interaction with this person is that he calls them to pick up the trash that he finds, and if they see a bag out on the street, they'll, they'll pick it up. And because if they don't, neighbors would call and tell them that there's a bag out on the street. So. That's that's what I'm hearing. There's, there's no connection. Let me go back to the bag on the street. I mean, people put their trash out in the bag. How do they know to, how does the DPW know to pick up that particular ba bag of trash? Uh, I don't know. I was, I I was, it was a special, yeah. like, like, you know, What's like the, the yellow. The trash? Okay. Like the yellow bags that so people on the highway use. There's, there's a gentleman around town that goes around and cleans up, picks up trash everywhere. And I think it, it's common knowledge that he, he's doing it in a bunch of different locations. And I think DP... So let me go back to that, well, it was, it that question. I didn't realize he was doing it. I mean, I've heard this name before. It was I, I've heard, heard I think we've name. talked about him here Pineville. before. Pineville. 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 Remember, yeah. remember he was cleaning up Pineville? There were several bags man. of trash. Oh, he needs to get... But he thinks he's doing there's, yeah, he I was going to say, it. the pine bale is probably one of the worst maintained. Right. Yeah, it's overgrown. Oh, and it needs it needs some work, but I think we're working on that. And I think there's a scout group that's adopted it. But um, no, I don't. I didn't. I was surprised. And, Very different from everything and, else. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe at this point, Will can tell what he knows about it because Will was was. I think that's why he's here tonight. Will was. Uh, you know, first saw uh, not not just this work, but some other work that had been done, and we were both confused by it. I got a call from Will, and it's like we thought someone was bringing material into the Millet area and dumping it, and it's because there were bags. This, this, so this was we talked the about this yes. two meetings ago, maybe. Really? Yeah. 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 The shop? That, 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 that situation we talked about. Could someone oh. do that? I do, I do have yes. It. Picture. This is different, but we talked about that situation two weeks ago. Yeah, so I, I have to say that, you know, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't have any, I just know that that, you know, I was there on one Saturday, two weeks later, I'm there again, you know, not even two weeks, and, and this has happened. So, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's... So it sounds like there's somebody who might be the person who's doing this as at a, as a best guess. Um, has anybody approached that person to sort of vet that and see if that's truly the case and talk to that person yet? Has anybody done any sort of, you know, because we might be, know who's doing this, we might not know who's doing this, so do we... <coughs> Have we had discussions? So, and go ahead, Will. Will. Go ahead. I know, and, and it is. I've met him several times. Um, I have a picture of him in the river with a 
a rake. Um, yeah, I was the one that first discovered this pile of stuff dumped near our lumber stockpile. Um, and I was totally puzzled. And we eventually figured out that he was pulling the stuff out of the woods and loving to pick up. Um, the what does he think he's doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I well, didn't want to ask that question. Are you <laughs> pulling mud and silt? And what about? The main, his main motivation um, is he feels that number one, streams need to be dredged. Number two, the town doesn't have enough resources or or employees to to properly maintain um, the drainage in town. Um, so he takes it upon himself to do it. Um, but this do doesn't, and he admitted, include cutting vegetation so that he can walk through and mm -hmm. dredging and digging. Um, the last time I saw him, when I took the picture, he was at the bridge, and I said, well, I, I suggested you cease and desist, um, and he really didn't take my advice or really what but 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 I think Chuck has already been dealing with him in, in, in an enforcement order sort of approach. Um, the one thing I didn't bring up with him, which I think would have been a good argument, <laughs> it might have gotten through to him, was that, you know, the Trails Committee went through an, an extensive permitting process. <laughs> to get a permit for this trail. Um, the building department, the town engineer reviewed the bridge plans. Um, the, they, they, you know, they told us where the sewer easement is down there to make sure we weren't, you know, like dig safe, to make sure we weren't um, damaging anything there when we we're installing structures. Um, and he's just doing all this work freelance um, his other argument was that um, he's, he's cutting vines out of trees, including grapevines, so that the trees don't die because um, they're getting strangled by the grapevine. Um, anyways, it's... It must be grapes of wrath. <laughs> anyways, it's a... I was, as I say, a very puzzling situation. And it... But the other side of this is that he's, he's well known around town and he does a lot of good cleanup work. Um, it's just that I think he's been <coughs> carried away at this point and needs to be reined in, needs to understand that um, there are certain things you shouldn't do. He wants to clean up things. I know a couple of storm drains that never seem to think it certainly needs to be cleaned, but he's got a, I can't imagine what he thinks he's accomplishing by doing this. Um, I think he does a lot, from what I've heard. Outside of this, yeah. right? From what I've heard, he picks up a lot, uh, uh, and and I think that's that is a, a notion that. about just trash, yeah, human trash. No. Okay. Yeah. Right, trash. Well, I thought he was like dredging it to take and make the thing. Deal. I don't know what he's doing here. Uh, well, this this, this, looks, like this yeah. looks like a very different project from oh. what I've heard in the past. I've heard about the trash phantom. Yeah. Uh, th this seems very different, but just in general, you know, from what I've heard. He's picking up a lot of trash everywhere, the trash beyond design. wetlands, beyond, you know, the, yeah. and he, you know, I think that's doing a lot of good for the for the town in general. Um, but I think this, to Will's point, I think with this needs to get reined in. I mean, this is, to me, this is unacceptable. This can't. You be brought done. up a good point, Will, and 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 you got to the utility. Here he is. Who's to say he's not going to hit, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, something, you know digging into into the bank and the and the channel itself you so know. I have a question besides him I, I guess understanding that he should have a permit if anything to do something like this is he educated in the wetland I mean does he nobody know I, we don't does he, does I would know? say no. the point where okay. is the elevator go like, I, like is he on this I don't I no. is he, no. I think he's he doesn't doing appear was in the construction business. business when do this yeah, right. I guess that's like the catch-22. Okay, right. So he did come to town hall, and he, 
I talked to him. He was he he Did actually. Did you ask him to come to town hall? No, he came into town hall on his own because his neighbor was encroaching on his property by cutting down some trees next to a water resource area. So it was a little ironic. But then when I told him that I would keep an eye on the place or I would go and check it out, and I asked him to look at it too. He did introduce himself, and I was kind of surprised. And I, you know, this is before I knew about this. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, and and it was funny because he came into town, and then we had we had a talk, and it, and it did, you know, echo what you had said. It's, I mean... You, you, you know, this one-time disturbance to go in and pull out something that's in, in the wetlands is, is a benefit to everybody. But if, if I had the opportunity to talk to him again and talk about this, I mean, the next thing that's going to happen here, not only is it going to dry out, is that you're going to get invasives growing in on this disturbed soil. So that, you know, that used to be button bush and, you know, other vegetation that the birds and whatnot, it's right next to the bird sanctuary, uh, are used to. And now it's going to be more fragmity like it is on the other side, the Hunt, so Hunt Street side of this. Of this um, is, this, is this a trench he dug? Yeah. I thought it was just some embankment he scraped down. I didn't realize that no. it was all the way back to here. He widened all of it and formed it in a different way. And then, like I mean, this is a lot of work. Is that a little rivulet or something? Yeah. yeah. And then he, 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 run, like, he went right through like the organic months. layer and he's right into that. What, by one man? Sand, gravelly is layer, the bee so, layer. So Chuck, when he came in, what what was the result of your discussion with him? Did you talk to him about an enforcement order? Did you talk to him about? Well, he hadn't done this yet, and I wasn't going to oh. talk to him about an enforcement order about pulling tires out of the out of the you know woods. I mean, to me, the problem when we when we met was. Um, you know, what he's doing down there should stop because what he was pulling out is beyond his knowledge and, I, you know, it's he shouldn't be touching that stuff and someone else has to look at it and I think that's happened already. And I just said, you know, the Trails Committee is, is there, you know, if, you know, where, where else do you work in town and, you know, can you go there for a while and, you know, clean up some other spot not an hour later, I get a call from Kimberly Roth telling me about this. So he didn't, he didn't let on that this was part of it. Um, and she wants, she wants something. What that is, I don't know. Is it an enforcement order? And that hasn't gone out yet because, because there's a lot of discussion about it. Um, but it hasn't gone out yet. She wants something. Is it an enforcement order? Is it the commission to talk to him, to rein him in, to try to educate him on what to do and what not to do? Will he talk to the commission? He basically told, told me that, and I'm not sure if this extends through everything that he does, but he just said, you know, I'm a town, of, I'm, a, I'm a resident of Reading, and I, and I can do these things. And, and, um, so it seemed like that it would be a little bit difficult to start on a conversation of, look, I just want to show you where you can go and where you can't go with, with that approach, but I, but I should try it. I mean, I yeah. certainly should try it, and I was thinking of reaching out to him before the enforcement order goes out and seeing where this one-on-one -on -one went. I would agree. I think that's the first step. I, I, I think that's the, the, the first quick step is... Residents aside... I mean, nobody has any rights to do this. No. No, so, it's a violation of the wetlands protection. Well, all, I'm, all I'm suggesting is that sometimes the easiest way to make a point like this is to tell him that he has to put it all back the way he found it and just see the kind of reaction you get to that. Now, I don't know if putting it back is just doing more damage or not, but that may crystallize in his brain the fact that he's got no authority, no right, and just can't help himself to this kind of a... I think... I think I'd rather have a try to create a proactive discussion to start. I mean, I, I think ultimately what we're hearing is there's things around here that he's doing that is good. This, to me, is a misunderstanding of what you can do. Well, oh, I, I meant just this here, not the trash picking up. Yeah. Just, yeah. And, and I, think, I think if we can take the first step of just having the conversation of 
look, the, there's there's steps that you have to take. There's an understanding. We, 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 whether it's having, having, trying to have them come to a meeting here and have that discussion, and in the future anytime, you know, having that discussion with you to, to move anything forward. But I think the first step is to try to, before an enforcement order, before something of like, you need to put it back, or this is, I think that let's just try to engage in a conversation because... Are we, are we thinking that his um, recycling duties over seed this, no? Or yeah, I think that's what I'm hearing from Mike. Yeah. He's like, the benefit that he's doing the town <laughs> outweighs, you I, know. What, so if this was someone's backyard, just and, and, they, and, and they said, well, look, I can do that because I'm a town resident, would you say what you just did? I mean, I, I get trying to talk to him, but I'm also kind of worried about the fact that I was told to report back to DEP. Yeah. And I'm not sure what they were asking for. And I would... And it would be great to know what they were asking for. So I, I think that I agree with the, you know, take a step, find out if that was enough, mm -hmm. you know, but may, maybe it's a not. And I'm afraid to say it that I, I'm, I'm expecting to find out. The, now that it's like, you know, when, once you see one of these, you're going to start seeing them everywhere. That's not good. Yeah, that's, that, I guess, my, I mean, my, this is my a good job. Is not to be heavy Someone knows what they're so, doing. So, so I guess that's, that's my point is that the, the, the immediate step is to make the call try to have the discussion, say it can't occur any longer, and, you know, this act activity can't occur any longer, and, and we'd like to have you have a conversation with the, the Conservation Commission. And, and not just hit you with an enforcement mm -hmm. order letter mm -hmm. in the mail. Yep. We'd, like to, we'd like to discuss this. We'd like to explain, you know, where the violation exactly is. And, and on the flip side, yeah, acknowledge that he has done other things that have served the public good in terms of picking up sidewalk trash. You know, I mean, that's a long-standing record in the town, and it's a decent service to the town. It's just gone a little far in this situation, and it violates the Wetlands Protection Act. He needs to know that, and not just hear it from you. Um, and I don't, I don't think... Um, hitting him with a letter, I think that's gonna. I think that's going to, without having an upfront discussion or a chance, um, is gonna garner. The sides are gonna separate further then, and, and right. there's less chance of having a discussion in the future. I mean, you can let him know. We yeah, always we have that at our disposal, yeah. and we can well, tell. The, the best thing about the letter yeah. is it's instantly, instantly DEP understands no, so. that. You know, we're paying attention. Or, no, not that we're paying attention, that if he doesn't pay attention to the letter, and I, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, I want to go through the steps like you guys prescribed, but I, I think the letter would tell DEP that at this point, you know, there's nothing I can do and they need to, they need to do something. Right. If it would continue beyond the letter. Well, that is almost 12,000 square feet of alteration. <laughs> so it's from Willow Street to, uh, really? yeah, to Willow right. Street. Feet wide, it's a long way. Yeah. It's, well, luckily, it's in the drier time. So I think, I think that that Bye. really ratchets up what they would do. Um, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that would be. But I, I'm, I'll tell you... Kimberly said, you know, let me know. Who, who's Kimberly? Well, they, Kimberly Roth they could, is the well, they could find. The yeah, the they could find, right? Yeah. They, they could, could find, find, yeah, their fines are very steep. Yeah. You know, easily, and, and that can be. Back, but. And that can be, I mean, uh, this gentleman may not even know of that level of alert at the DEP. He needs to know about that. So, well, I, I'm not trying to be an over heavy handed person here, but this old expression is that ignorance of the law is no excuse. This, this guy has committed something that's borderline egregious in terms of the Wetlands Protection Act. I don't, pussyfooting around isn't going to, you don't have to hit the guy over there with a hammer, but you got to get his undivided attention and let him know that this is not something to be. But that's what you're saying is that the letter might 
and all. Well, it's got to be official. You can't, you can't let it go I'm unrecorded that you yeah. notified them. I, I well? guess I guess I'm not opposed to having an official letter. I guess what I'm opposed to is issuing an enforcement order now, immediately before we have a conversation. Well, Try to have a conversation. Because then you won't. Well, I be think able the letter ought to say this is this is a demand for you to cease and desist. Period. Stop. Of an Come in, order, talk to us. And yeah. Ratching it up to a portion where you pay thousands of dollars in fines. I, I so think that gets it on record. So I think it's it not gets. a it's not a uh, it's not an enforcement order. It's a violation notice. Okay. So right. it is like well, we a letter. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Right. I, and I think that's fair. I think that that gets it on the public. The a it just gets on the a record of like we've sent this to you you are you have to be aware of this you, you need to talk to us yeah no well you can it's so just, one of the things that enforcement order automatically goes to DEP and a violation notice you don't have to why don't we to be I, responsive to I DEP think we should. yeah I think we should to, to show them that we're being responsive and 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 right. if it gets beyond that then we may need them to step in but right so that keeps that thread going that's kind of where I'm going with that. In, in that letter, you, you can request that he come to a, a, a date certain meeting? You can, yeah. <laughs> yep. It should be discussed at a public meeting. I agree. I'm just wondering if, if that's going to, if, if we can, if he would end up coming here, if that would just... I, I, I really think the first step is to call to call him well, or to reach out to him well, and then see where that goes and then me, take the second step. I, I think no. if, but if you're you proving the if, letter, so let's, if you did if you did prepare this letter and send it to him, that call and discussion with you might happen as a result of that letter. Yeah, so that's I, that would I would. And then he comes prepared. in. You know, I have to say, ta so, talking to him that day, I didn't feel like. Be somebody I could, you know, if I saw him around, stop and talk to him. He didn't, you know, he didn't act like that. I just don't think that he's going to, and, I, and I'm not sure, and I probably, I, I would just say I didn't well, know if he would come to a night Will, meeting. Will, have you had any conversation with him? In yeah, yeah, several. <laughs> when he was doing this, did you say anything to him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I request, I advise him to cease and desist. And what was his reaction, I um, guess? He does, he just really not much of a reaction. He's he's very smug. He he just thinks you know, like I, I think Chuck is correct and he, he he's not gonna get upset about what we say, but he'll probably ignore what we say unless there's severe repercussions. Um so maybe you do just skip over <laughs> no. Um he's you know Despite hearing that, I, I still think we want to take yeah, those no, steps. He's, and he's, if we need to go he's further, on disability, he so he's. It's reasonable, it's appropriate. Yeah. Exactly. It documents Not working. it. Sure. Oh, he's on disability and he's doing that work. Awesome. He's yeah. got a, he's got a fit. <laughs> From my understanding, is he does well, have a physical yeah, limitation. He said you need to dig trenches. <laughs> oh, that's. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spinal injury. There's, he, he either uses he, a cane or a, a yeah. rake or yeah. a shovel to. And he, and he is, and he is required to keep moving, to keep that, to keep from stiffening. And not, but anyway. Yeah, it's. And I guess part of the reaction to the letter is going to tell you. Somebody told me a story about it. Okay. He's going to give you a, a just you know answer them in any manner they they accept, and then clandestinely go off and do his thing until it gets discovered again. If, if he receives a warning and then persists, we yeah. have the enforcement order, we have DEP. Right. It's, it's we don't want to time. take it up to the next level. The thing of it is, uh, is he doing this in places that would be readily visible? I mean, I mean people... This is all we know about, so... Is there... Is there I know, I don't know where he's in. the places he could be doing this, we wouldn't know. And I just walked we... through Pinedale. There's oh, nothing yeah. like this yeah. happening um, there. In fact, there was a... A woman <laughs> <laughs> at our last day and she's in wetland yeah, community on watch. Yeah. There's another stream off near Hump Park and nations. somebody's cleared a trail right down the stream and it's really nice to walk down there and <laughs> it's a nice place. Really? So we, we don't know of any trail down there, so in Hunt Park by the baseball field? Yeah. So it might be because there's a a drainage dish oh, there. By the baseball field. I know that. I know that. Um, where was it? The leaves falling. Off, we can see far um, into the forest. Near Hunt Park, near Pleasant Street and Smith Ave. And, um, yeah. 
Eaton Street. Oh, yeah. 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 You don't know. Yeah. 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 That's been there since a year or so ago. I that's mentioned that to the DPW department. What's this? I mentioned to the DPW department. I said, who, who did the work down there? There's some trees cut and whatnot. What's what's going on on the on the bank there? And they didn't know anything about it. Seriously? I mean, no, I'm, they didn't. I'm, I haven't been down there, so I, I wouldn't. It's almost like three quarters of a mile long. Huh? Well, you know, it's, so. yes, it, it's certainly feasible. I mean, I think he likes playing in rivers. <laughs> it's like, you know, I like playing in rivers and digging ditches and things yeah. when I was a kid, but. Well, <laughs> well, playing, not, re <laughs> not redesigning and rerouting. And yeah, I think that that's very motiv motiv mo that's that's yeah. designed, med premeditated something. But just the the disturbance, the footprints up and down, and and you can see this, I mean, you can see the disturbance from the bridge that we've made. Yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah. to be honest, when Chuck said this, this is only this is. A, a small view of 12,000 feet of disturbance. <laughs> I'm looking back going, you could land a plane on that if it's 12,000 feet of disturbance. Yeah, it's That's a big swath of clearing. It, it is, and it's it's nothing above, no shading, you know. And it's shrubs. So it's dry out. And it's shrubs. It's not just herbaceous. And all that material is going to be moving, so, it's, you know, it's going to... It'll be gone tomorrow. Yeah, so you're going to lose a lot of material. He had, a, he had a chainsaw going down there too. What? Um, oh my gosh! I didn't get a picture. I couldn't get close enough because he was, you know, in the river. So I don't know what he was cutting. But a chainsaw? Yeah. Was he clearing the river way? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. It, the, no, I, I walked it from one end to the other. There was a there was a tree that had fallen over. There was some obstructions in it, and he and he cut those out. I think if, you know, I think if he just left it at that, you know, that would have been okay. But that kind of clearing that we see in this picture is, is not okay. And he, obviously he doesn't, under, I don't expect anybody listening who got their backyard cleaned out by this guy to understand what the problem is here. But it's, it's, it's bad and, you know, we shouldn't, you know, we should really try to be proactive with this guy. But if we're not able to do it, you know, just seeing that picture, which I know. So I got these pictures sent to me by DEP. So they have these pictures. Okay. So they don't, you know, it's not. So, so when they answer. say, I want to hear back from you, the, you know, they're, what I'm feeling about this disturbance is probably, you know, magnified to those people. If I'm, if I'm, I'm just asking, not trying to pose a course of action, but if they're the, top governing body over this kind of problem, are they just kind of saying, okay, you handle this and solve the problem. If you can't, we will. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, that's not a bad way to start from their perspective. Don't get no, me wrong. they did the same thing at the uh, Reading Rifle and Revolver Club. So someone uh, reported that. I went sure. over there. No, you know, It was obvious what the thing was. And it was more or less... You know, if they're not going to work with you, then they they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna be working with us. Okay. And that's what they said about the rifle club. So. Well, and if this gentleman understands and can comprehend the the nature of the severity of the situation, and he doesn't want to dance with those people, then mm. maybe you can get his undivided attention, and he will stop. Yeah. Or we can. They just issue a fine. Huh? They'll just issue a fine. Yeah, well, and, and, but they like, can... A, a, not anywhere close to a fine issue, that we issue. But they like, can issue an enforceable <laughs> fine. We can send them a threat. And we may never collect, but they'll collect. Yeah, not only will they collect, the fine's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, that was, the, number, the number is just ridiculous relative to the number we talk about for us. So... Thousands? Yes. Yeah, so... I mean, it's severity. This is, that's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of a lot of people won't understand, you know, exactly what's been lost through this kind of action. <laughs> Get and pictures of them, and put posters up throughout all the wetlands and say, <laughs> "Wanted." <laughs> Have you seen this guy? No, it's like hundred thousand dollars. You know, it really it really should be you know reseeded <laughs> and straightened yeah. out, and someone who knows what they're that's doing to walk through and make sure that everything's everything's right. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about like. 
if, if it was if it was a business that did that and they wanted to like just get some water off their property, you would make them hire a consultant and, and go back through it and you know come up with a plan to make sure that it doesn't turn into an, an invasive uh, invasive um, you know planting area. So, and then, you know, when the water goes through and we're going to get a lot of rain in the next couple of days, it's going to take a lot of that topsoil out of there. Yep. So. You're going to plug up something downstream. Yep, plug up and it's going to, you know, change what's here. And it might, you know, alter what's going on. I mean, most likely it's still going to be within that. It's, it's, it's one big enforcement and it's a oh. dollar per square foot. Yeah. A little more than a dollar. You can look up all the, I mean, uh, do it for all the other things on DEP. You can look up every enforcement. So, Chuck, are you, um, are, you, are you comfortable mm -hmm. writing that letter and getting that drafted? Or is that something you want us to review at a meeting? Or I don't no, think. I think time is of the essence. Um, I, I can write a letter. That's okay. Not, um, you guys okay. haven't. I don't. I can't remember one time that I wrote something and someone said, "Geez, Chuck, we could have done that either better. Probably could do it differently." And I agree with that. But it, I think. Well, if you want a letter like that, I'll write it. Yeah. <laughs> I. You know, it would have been great if, like, yeah, I, someone knew him from like the bowling club or something, and we could, you know, meet, have that guy come and meet me with him. But. Uh, I will keep you guys informed. I will okay. send you out the letter if someone has like a. I usually give it, you know, hey, here's the letter. Okay. So, the plan is to reach out to him, gauge the situation, and then send the letter. I thought it was the other way around. I, I wouldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, I did way. too. I wouldn't send I wouldn't. the letter. Wait for the phone call. I, yeah. I wouldn't dipstick the, the situation. I'd state the situation, state what needs to be done. All right, let's and get a motion to. Yeah. I have a motion to. I make a motion to issue a, it's a violation, violation notice. notice. Letter. Yeah. Well, a violation notice. Violation second. notice. I second that. All those in favor? Well, I think it was the lynch mob idea I was going to come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I think we yes, just a neighborhood watch. Just when I thought. A whole lot of wetlands. Well, thanks for all your hard work out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, that looks Thank great. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's looking great. great. Yeah, good. Yeah, well. A lot of people are going to enjoy those trails. Yeah, the bridge. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, the good. bridge is heavy, dude. That's more awesome. More. I, I got to hand it to you. It, it looks pretty cool. Wow. It does. Getting more and more publicity, just just people down there and yeah. more volunteers. And yeah. Really yeah. Really For some reason, I thought that stretch of river was like 50 feet, but now I don't think in my brain that it's like. 20 something, right? 18 feet? Yeah, the, 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 the channel is about 18 feet. The bridge is 24 feet. Cool. All right. Good luck. All right. Thanks, Thanks for giving out, Will. Will. My office still stands for the, the raking, Will. <laughs> Pardon? My office for the raking still stands. Oh, okay. Do you remove peat moss and lichens <laughs> off the of roof? Well, that's the, that's the problem. It's not yeah. tough stuff to get off. Because it's a wood roof. And, you know, oh, it's uh, okay. Uh, I'm installing wood, wood shingle? Yeah, I'm installing zinc strips to try and... It does kill the... Good luck. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zinc strips in my roof. Zinc strips? Yeah. I think you're necessary to house in the grass to grab something. Mm -hmm. So... At 7.15, we had a policy discussion of what, I am, I'm not quite sure, project update, but I do have some information to that share. That is it. I was being very uh, coy with my wording. Yeah. <laughs> I am uh, putting my house on the market now. <laughs> uh, in, in a few, hopefully in a few weeks, if I can get through the legal part of it. So I don't know. It, it does take a while. Uh, hopefully. Not in Reading. <laughs> well, no, no. but still to close, it, it, you know, the, the realtors are saying, even if I got right away, it takes about six weeks. So. No, that's not. I'd like to, yes. But like out of, out of town? Out of state. <gasps> Where are you going? Are you, are you like, you're, you're in a hurry. No, I have a house in 
and rent and um, yeah, renting. Yes, I do in Maine. In Maine. Oh, okay. So I do have a residence to go to, but I was uh, looking at the um, coast of New Hampshire, that area, Portsmouth, Exeter. Cool. Twenty-seven miles to uh, check out there. About what it is, right? Yeah, about that. Twenty-seven. Oh. Twenty-seven miles. Twenty-seven miles. Thought it was twelve. No, it's thirteen. The, the, the coast is the coastline is thirteen. Yeah, but oh, to sure. get to, to get to Portsmouth is about you're about right. Oh, maybe that's what I'm confused. It's only twelve miles of coastline. Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen, 13 miles. miles. Thirteen wow. miles. Sure, I thought it was. Really? It's yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, it's like that's almost a hundred miles from Reading. So it's like 30 miles. What are you talking about? 100 where? miles? Isn't it? To where? Is it to to Portsmouth? Portsmouth? No. From, from <laughs> Arlington. A <laughs> hundred totally miles. What is it here? From here miles. to where? From here to Newbury. It's 30 it's miles to Boxford. Miles. And then from Boxford to... <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. So I've driven up there a lot. It's like, it's... it's it is to Portsmouth takes, at least, miles. takes a little bit more than an hour. 16 miles. Yeah, six right? zero. 60 yeah. miles from Arlington. There you go. Halfway between your two guesses. Yeah. 60 miles. So you, yeah. yeah. Okay. 49 miles from Reading. 60 huh. miles. Anyway. Yeah, that well, that's about an hour. I guess that makes sense. It's, 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 uh, not, it's not 36 good. minutes from Reading to the Piscataco River Bridge. Piscataco? So, what is that? So, yeah. so well, what's your plan? Yeah, what's your plan? I just told you what my plan was. Well, that's, so, your, that's your life plan. The, the important plan for us. <laughs> um, actually, didn't you meet somebody when you do working on the... Mm, nothing the, official. And, I, and, I, and it, yeah, that person was telling me that they were interested. So... So but I yeah that's more. I told them you know talk to the to the select board um, the select the secretary you know the town manager's office that's where it starts and that's all I could have could have done but I did tell them that there was um, you know the meetings twice a month and and uh, we usually have a site visit on Monday or Tuesdays and they're optional for most. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, Andy, is Andy still our, our liaison? No. No, no we have two liaisons. Yeah, yeah. John Halsey. Yeah. Um, and Landry. And Landry. And Landry and um, Mr. Halsey. And Alvarado. No. And Landry and uh, John Halsey. Landry and um, Halsey. Halsey, okay. Are our two liaisons as of is, this is she, summer. Is she back? Landry, is she? Back from. So, what's that? I don't know. We need a, a chiropractor. Car no, a car wash. Oh, we need a car. Join, join the club. <laughs> Big Phil. So, so, I think if anybody knows anybody who wants to volunteer as well, we could use some more. So, as a town employee, I am not allowed to be part of any kind of solicitation for. Um, for any spots on this board. Really? It's true. <laughs> and uh, I've been told by over the years, but most recently by uh, a direct supervisor. And um, so that, that can't happen from me, but I Im implore you to, uh, I don't have know of any restrictions on the commission themselves. So. Can we, can we actually direct people to speak with you? If they have well, no, they talk to the select board. They talk to the, you know, um, Caitlin Saunders. Right. You know, that's who they need that's to talk to. That's to, to apply. But let's no, say, for instance, no, someone... the vetting process is that you got to talk to the select Well, board. I just, I, I think if they've decided to wonder what the you know. job entails, right. yeah. I think they, that would be fine. Yeah, okay. Well, we could, we could also talk to that, too. I mean, right. yeah. And I think there's a different... And then there's this leadership thing that's gotta mm -hmm. gotta be discussed. Um, it's unlikely that we'd have a new person take over as chair, vice chair, and that's gonna all come up in the air again. So, and we'd have to jump on it uh, and have weeks to uh, you know kind of digest that. So we only have one meeting in November and one meeting in December, if that makes any difference. 
anyone. Um, and no. uh, I just have to tell you, Jackie was really not much help at all. So I don't think that there's much, <laughs> much there's not much <laughs> to being being chair. <laughs> So that's it. There's our quorum. So we have five. Now we would have four. One, two, three, four. On best case scenario. Nobody gets sick. Um, do you have but, the well, contact person? But the way it's, you know, in all honesty, it's, just, it's not supposed to work like that. We have seven, and we have a quorum of four because I think they understand it's a volunteer commission, and that's it. You know, it's not easy to. Um, you know, you have got the commitments. A, usually a quorum is just a percent of the body. If it's 20 members and the quorum is 60% or 50% or 40%. Yeah. But having just seven members, is, you, you told me the quorum is set by the board, by the town, is four for a committee? I think that, it, yeah, we were told, I have to look into it again, but we were told, because I know MACC, the Massachusetts Com uh, yeah. Commission so has... Uh, it's, yeah. it's, Sorry. Has a different thing, more in line with what you just said. Well, that's how most boards work, but yeah. But I'm not sure I could check into that again. That would be very helpful. Do you have the dates for uh, yeah. meetings for 2020? I, I think it yeah. specifically says within our bylaws, like the conservation committee hmm? needs four people. Oh, um, to vote on anything? <laughs> yeah, we have we have a fixed number <laughs> based on the optimum yeah. full. Membership. What's the, is the author seven? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Do you have the dates for 2020 yet? I don't, but it would be the second and second and fourth. Yeah. How do they determine the author membership number of chairs? Chuck, could you run the meeting by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what would happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would need a meet. Well, I guess you have to have a public meeting. So it would be certainly interesting. I think it goes to you know critical level when we start losing people. Do you have the contact person for that person you talked to? No. The trails committee. We're not allowed to solicit. But, no, but, but you, if you gave the names him. to us. We could solicit. Him. I didn't. I didn't get his number. I didn't do anything. You no. didn't get his name. No. Like being a, approached, if a good not person, soliciting. he tell us. I'll solicit. Oh, serious. <laughs> but if somebody approaches you, then in all earnesty, you should provide them whatever information you can, yeah. so they know who to contact. Because yeah. that's I not did. a solicitation. He knows to contact. Okay, it's the same. I think it worked exactly <laughs> how it's supposed to. Be. <laughs> like I couldn't take it on you. other than to say, "This is where you go, and this is what the job sure. entails." Right. You know. And then I, they got the message. And and there's another trail day coming up, and if he's there and he has any yeah. questions for me. But you got to understand, Will's there too, and there's other people there, and, you know. So you you haven't had it sold the house yet, though, right? No. So it's about six weeks. Yeah. It doesn't take and, long. You know, well, if, it doesn't go, if it doesn't go now, and try again in the spring, so. Uh, I, I don't know if it's still true, but I... At one point, Reading houses were on the market less than like ten days, seven days, yeah, seven to seven to ten high. days was the average sale life, shelf life of the sale in Reading. Yeah, I saw the one on Charles Street, three. Well, I shouldn't have said the address, but the one on Charles Street that we approved was still was still at the for sale sign on the front. Which I was surprised because on Charles. Charles. Yeah, the one across the one across the, the, school? Road. the one on the corner of Bachelor and. He has a hey, building there. Still empty. He's yeah. still, well, he's still working on it. I know the guy that lives. Uh, Seriously? I know him. I know the person doing the work. But <laughs> their, their house across the street, they just moved in too. And, and that guy is pretty friendly. And I've talked to him many times. But yeah, he, he, just, he said that they just planted over there and went and checked it out. And the plants are in. But it, it looks like it's going slow. Yeah. Sure. Um, um, minutes. Minutes. I didn't we do. Minutes. I didn't. Seriously. I don't think you sent them to us. I looked. I looked. I looked. I didn't. 
It didn't look oh, closely not in my spam. I put them in the packet. The one that we didn't get for this one? I don't believe that. The email packet? I don't believe that. That's fake. Right in that email packet. All right, so we'll no, do no, these no, minutes no, at the email next. Packet was the agenda and Mr. Yeah, no, that's not true. Let me a circle. Oh. Meeting packet. You're right. Shanghai? Is that how you pronounce that, Shanghai? Shangshu. No, Shangji. Shangshu, I think. Oh, the guy that was here? Shangji Shu. Shangji Shu. Are the cameras rolling? Is it, sh it was shoe. It's like shoes only without the other. Oh. Motion to uh, see what he's No, no, no. There's a couple more things. Stop that. <laughs> so, yeah, so the minutes. Ah, oh, damn. Next time. Yeah, I think you can go through these. Um, so May, uh, 107 Main Street, I uh, did call DEP again, and uh -huh. uh, I was asking, I inquired about, you know, it being appealed and where was it in the appeal process. Uh, so it is, it has been taken on by someone, and what can happen is they would either send out notices saying that, um, you know, come to the site visit, we're going to discuss this, and then they'll, they'll, they'll take it up. But the notes in the computer that uh, on the system, which is something that I had to call in and ask about, uh, they're looking for uh, if there's um, if they have standing. So that's what I'm hearing. So they're asking if the person uh, that asked for the appeal, yeah. um, what's her name, Patricia Debagney, uh, yeah. has standing. So they're evaluating us or, or? No, no, they're not asking us. They're trying to decide. They're evaluating whether it's a valid, yeah, okay. a valid right. appeal. So, right. they, so, yeah. I mean, I think the questions she asked may, some of them were definitely not conservation questions. Yeah. yeah. Right. So they can't do any, so those go, to get thrown away right away. Right. And then what's so left is they have to kind of understand, you know. What's do, do they reach out to her? No, they have to make their own decision based on the information. So what they've sent her, that's why when you have an appeal, you have to frame it around exactly what the, the problem is. Right. Yeah. And you can you can send them information, you know, you can do whatever you want. Once it's in, they're going to evaluate, evaluate what they have and what you've sent them. Interesting. I, I think if it's where I believe it probably should be, well, he's the, this, the second project is going to take care of all the problems with the first. And then when the thing is done, everything should be up to snuff. I do have a question. Um, right. That's the way it was presented. That, that was yeah. the intent. Right, yes. and, and she's not willing to accept that based on the performance of the first project. I don't know. You know, I'm going to tell you, DEP, nine times out of ten are going to uh, accept the appeal and we'll be out there talking about it. Well, that's their job, right? Yeah, I would. I would be surprised if they don't. It's just. This is just taking a lot, taking a little bit longer to try to make sure that they figure out a way to accept it. That's what I'm thinking. Accept her appeal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, question, Chuck. Was there an issue was with one of the design review or the CPDC after us? I don't know, and I, I don't know if that's conservation information. I don't, I don't know. So I, I'm so, you know, I'm not CPDC, so I'm, I don't want to get into that. But you can review the CPDC minutes. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I know that they have to go back to another. I mean, it's not through the process yet, so I don't know where it's at and what the problems are. But I know that it's finished our process. Any other items on the agenda? Yeah, so we have one more. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, just to, to get back to that piece of it. What happens if it doesn't go through CPDC? Because there is work contingent on, on ours that it was going to go through. Well, if it, he doesn't start the work within a year, that the, on the, the plants were supposed to be planted within a year of whenever it was approved. Yeah. So. 
that, so that's supposed next, to happen either way. I'm gonna be talking to him next spring, and if not, we we'll, won't be won't be Rebecca writing this uh, enforcement order, but we would we would insist on having that done. I mean, I, I think that we agreed to that, and that's definitely what's gonna happen. Yep. Okay. All righty. Next. Are you finished with your policy update? Yes, I am. And what about your project update? Done. <laughs> There's a site visit at Austin Prep tomorrow at 11 o'clock. If anyone wants to go, it's just to check out it's like the pre-activity meeting. They have already they've put in the matting that goes over the causeway and they put in the erosion control, and everyone will be there. Not everyone, like everyone from Town Hall, but everyone, the consultants, and mm -hmm. well, from you certainly would get to see if erosion control works. <laughs> well, I think that, um, mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, the, the matting that they're using is new to me. I mean, you might have seen it before, but I haven't. So that would be pretty interesting. And I think they're staging, and they want to start cutting trees. Um, but you know, again, they've they have passed our. We have given them an order of conditions. They are beyond their appeal period. The appeal or any kind of appeal was checked into by me, and there is none under the uh, order of conditions. So as far as we're concerned, as far as the commission is concerned. We're, we're set, so I think they're going through an appeal process through CPDC, and you know that's outside of outside of us. So again, I don't know anything about it. All right, so uh, so uh, so the conservation restriction for Arcadia Ave, uh, I received the final copy, which needs to be signed. So. Uh, Kevin and Christine Riley of 113 Arcadia Ave uh, in perpetuity and exclusivity conservation for conservation purposes, purposes grant the Reading Conservation Commission 3.96 acres of land shown on the conservation plan. Let's see if I can get pull this up. Does that come in good enough back there? So it's all that hashed in area shown on the conservation plan um, as the conservation restriction area. This parcel and conservation restriction were first discussed on November 8th, 2016, and the owner was eager to move forward with the Conservation Commission and the restriction. Uh, it has been almost three years since we started this process, and tonight you will sign the restriction and send it to the select board for their signature. Uh, it's never a familiar path that we take when we start a CR discussion, but it's always interesting. I wanted to thank jo Joan Hooper, who was the original owner of this land. I don't know, you might have known her back in the day. And uh, Jennifer Collins from um, AJ and Sons, who basically kept this train moving because there was a lot of times where the attorneys were just doing something else and she was on this and of course uh, most of all Kevin and Christine Riley uh, the current owners of this property so I don't know if anyone else has anything to say but we have a conservation restriction here and I think that we can <coughs> sign it I don't know after we sign it if it will be reviewed by it hasn't been reviewed by our town council. So we could sign it and we could have it reviewed or we can have it reviewed and then sign it afterwards. So it's, it's up to you. I haven't uh, done enough of these to know if, whether that matters or not. I think we might personally take that for council. Just review, make sure everything's in the right. So but what if, what's the downside if we sign it? Oh. <laughs> They'd just redo it and we'd sign it So again. this is already signed by, this was already yeah. reviewed several, several times by us. Okay. And uh, so through each process, and it's been, it's been also reviewed by the Offices of Energy Affairs and signed by the Rileys. So I don't think it would matter if we sign it. So council has seen this 
At this some was point. some closer version to this previously. Yeah. Make a motion to sign contingent on sign it and and process contingent on council's review. Second. All those in favor. What have you said? That right there. Okay. Find, find your name and you can make it as legible as you can. As legible? What? Chuck, um, That's the opposite word. The signatures. as part of that project, do bounds get put in specifically behind um, abutting properties next to the current homeowners? So there are no bounds other than what the homeowner put in for his 25-foot line. Okay. So that would be something that, you know, conservation so would, would do or okay, something Okay, like so that. that's our... That's ours. That's our purview to mm -hmm. make sure that those... Areas behind other people's backyards are not encroached upon or filled. There's no, there's no real access. I mean, so conservation districts right? need to be walked once a year, but there's no real access from Arcadia Ave. I mean, there is from Arnold Ave, right. but to be back there with that small little bit before you fall into the wetland. I don't think yeah, that's the benefit of this at all, but across this wetland area is Longwood Conservation Area. And we've just added, you know, yeah. we just added all this acreage to that. And I think that's the benefit. Again, there's a steep bank and there's a lot of this that's just not usable. Mm -hmm. But the thought is where, where it does come out into a peninsula, maybe something can happen in that area. Um, and again, we now will land the meeting. Nothing is proposed at the moment. Thank you. So Becky, if you're finished with the policy discussion I am. and the project update, I am. I think we can make the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Are you a second? Oh, busy. All those in favor? Okay. Meeting adjourned.